greetings to you on this Wednesday evening, which is fraught with pain and fraught with opportunity in a new way. When uh, Joanne read that lesson, you understand that when it comes to these kind of things in life, it's a, it's a linchpin moment for our country. It's a linchpin moment for our neighborhood, for our city. And it's a linchpin moment for our hearts. And that is you have to kind of come to grips with what's really going on. And when we read the Bible, the Bible is full of stories about oppression, about slavery, about rich taken from poor. And you read that book of Amos, and he says, poor people are sold for a pair of shoes where I'm from. A pair of shoes. And you look out in the world today, and if you've got a really nice pair of shoes on, that's more than a lot of people make in a year. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. And yet when we read that word from, uh, from Hosea, Hosea says it very cleanly. He says, you have torn that you might heal. Things have fallen apart so you might put them back together again. Things have come to this impasse so that God might demonstrate to us that there is a place to walk in justice. There is a place to walk in righteousness. There is a way to walk humbly before the Lord. And the arrogant need to know that, that it's time, their time is up. And we all need to humble ourselves before God. What has happened is a, disgra a national disgrace, uh, the murder of an in innocent man at the hand of a someone who is called to serve and protect. And we all saw it, and we all continue to see it, and it doesn't get any better. And whatever is being done, and that's the legal system we have, must take place in that legal way. Whatever demonstrations, whatever uh, marches, whatever protests are being done are to, are in the best sense of that word to accomplish exactly that goal. And where we see violence stemming from all of that, the first question is still, why did it happen at all? I don't leave that first question. I'm not in favor of looting and violence. Nobody should be. And I've always been this guy. I would say if there are people who are on the wrong side of the law in times like this, that means that the church belongs out there bringing those people back to the right side. The church is not for all the good people. <laughs> the church is for all the people. The church is for every single human being. When we, when we used to take in a lot of the kids off the street, some people were not happy with that. No, what are you doing? My kid's better than that. Why should my kid hang out with that bad kid? How about this? How about if your kid made that other kid better? How about if the gospel, how about if Jesus made somebody better? How about if we gave everybody a chance to get better and, and therefore come on the side of justice and peace? That's the way I have always seen it as a pastor, is the church does not belong. Well, as a 74-year-old pastor, I don't go out on the street that much right now, okay? Let's be fr honest here. But if I was a 47-year-old pastor, I'd be out on the street with my mask, and I would be saying, we need to be there for the sake of Jesus. We need to be there for the sake of healing. We need to be there to make sure that these systems and structures of this world do not overwhelm people. You know, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 says it so well. We wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers, against systems and structures, against spiritual evil in high places. And when we're doing that, we're going to run into some obstacles along the way. And they may be ourselves. And we may find out that the church is to do nothing. We may find out that we ourselves are timid and shy. We may find out that there's no immediate answer. And we may find out that the answer, even if it's a good one, doesn't last that long. What does the Holy Scripture say? It says, what does God require of you? You, Jesus people, do justice, love mercy, walk humbly before your God. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly before your God. 
See, and, and, and that, that passage from uh, Micah, Henry read that one, that passage is about a court case, just so you know. And, and God is taking his people to court. They think they're taking him to court. They say, oh, put me up on the stand, God says. Put me up there. Where were you <laughs> when I created the world? Didn't I do this for you? Didn't I bring you out from Egypt? What have you done? Gone off in the wrong direction. Taking advantage of people. Not taking in the poor and the sick. Caring about yourself more than others. And he says, this is what I require of you. Do justice. Love mercy. Walk humbly. I think we're ready to begin walking humbly myself. I think it's time. I think it's time. And we don't... We don't put other people down. We don't mess with somebody else automatically. We just start with us and we say, I want to be that person that does justice, loves mercy, and walks humbly. And I'd like to be in a church that does that. And I'd like to be in a church body that does that. And I'd like to be in a city that does that. I'd like to be that person. And it don't matter if you're 74 or 15. Some kids are seeing this stuff for the first time. I'm sure that if any kids watch tonight, they have not heard the song, If I Had a Hammer, <laughs> which we used to sing back in the day all the time at these kind of times when things were bad. And they may not have even heard. I, I heard it on TV today. I never heard that song. Uh, we will overcome? The guy said, no, we shall overcome. Uh, and he said, that's nice. I like it. Well, it's time another generation understands that there's a way to stand together, to hold hands, and to make a difference. And it's done not for us, but for the one who gave himself on the cross. The back of our bulletin today is a cross with a bunch of people in a circle holding hands. So hard because we can't hold hands, we can't do any of that stuff right now. But we can surround that cross and say, because of what God did for me, I'm going to do for others. That we can do. And so tonight, uh, my strong word to each of you is to be that light in the middle of a dark time, to search and seek and discern what the Spirit tells you to do and to be now, and to be a mighty little church in the middle of a block, in the middle of a neighborhood, in the best way we can, in a very difficult time. Amen? Amen.